Well, hello. I'm curious. An atheist. In fact, a naturalist. Because not only do I not believe in gods, like atheists do, I also don't believe in the supernatural in any sense or form. Hence, naturalist. A person who accepts only naturalistic reasons for why the universe works. So you asked, what are the arguments against the existence of God? Okay, well first off, let me tell you. In the atheist community, the secularist, those people, what you will find is that the burden of proof is upon you. It's not their draw, job to try to disprove your belief, but your job to try to prove it. But that's not really the question you asked. That's what most, if not all, will stick to. But I'm actually going to try to disprove your negative. In other words, I'm going to try to reason with you why a God, a being, or anything like that would not exist. Now, you accept I imagine that in some ways the laws of science and nature are valid, correct? You accept gravity, you accept hydrodynamics, meteorology, well, I can't see you accept these things. But would it be fair to say that you don't believe that everything is God's direct handiwork? Let me elaborate. When your car breaks down, now, if it breaks down in the middle of nowhere, you would pray that it would make it around the bend. And being someone of faith, you would probably think that you had a chance that your prayer would be answered. Now, you might get a tow, or you might make it to a shop. You might pray that, that shop might be open. But let's say you just had a, a problem, a knock in your car, and you knew you were traveling and you had a long way to go. Now let's say you met a fellow Christian who was a mechanic. And a mechanic, by the way, is someone who understands engineering and all the physics, or at least enough of the physics, to understand how your vehicle works and functions. Now, what if you were talking with him and you said, could you please fix my car? And he said, all right, I will. This is just an example, for example's sake. Now, what if he got down on his knees by the side of your front fender with the hood up and started praying to God for your car to be fixed? Started it up because it was cold and it wasn't knocking now. Closed the hood and he says, that's okay. I think, I feel, no, no, I think. I feel God has answered our prayers. 
That'll be 157, please. 157. What would you say? I, I know that's kind of a silly example, but it's like, no. You would accept, I imagine, you would po most probably accept that there would be some point where you would say, that's hogwash. I know it has a slightly humorous accent, but there is a point to it. The point is, is that there would be places and times you would not accept divine intervention. You could put that same example to a doctor. Oh, you would pray for your loved one or yourself to be well, but unless you were so inclined, would you really trust the administrations of a faith healer? Some would. But by and large, most of us in the Western world would trust in science, the science of medicine. And so on down the road. Now that's one reason I've tried to establish that perhaps you rely upon the natural world of science and nature. So, if you could think of all the places where you definitely accept God's intervention, you might accept God's intervention in places where you definitely wouldn't then you have to ask yourself why would I as an atheist I mean myself accept any of those the standards just go up much further And maybe that's something you can ask yourself. Now, the point of that was, was that you asked me, why do I have an argument against God? Well, because if we can both agree, at least in some part, that the natural world exists, whether created by God or not, it exists within itself whether you believe it can be superseded by divine intervention now if there was divine intervention wouldn't there be at least indirectly natural evidence to confirm that intervention let's say a man was working in a factory and he was a very good man but unfortunately because of another man's sloth his laziness he left some oil on the floor some grease and the man fell into a saw that would have cut his arm off now this may seem like a miracle but perhaps the saw deflected at an angle the man caught himself or his protective clothing 
saved him. What seemed like should have taken his arm off, only cut through his clothing, and everyone whistled and looked and thanked the heavens and said, oh, this must be a miracle. But what if that same man lost his arm? Yes, he would be back to the doctor. But now, if there was a God, why do we never see this scenario? A man falls onto a blade, a rotating blade like in a sawmill or a steel blade like in slaughterhouse that easily cuts meat. He falls into it, throws his arm up to protect himself because it's just a natural instinct. And that blade clearly touches his arm where you can see his arm ripple from the teeth grinding upon his skin but his skin does not cut. His arm does not redden, welt, or so signs of anywhere. Perhaps the sunlight even came out from a cloud. Or, as in biblical times, perhaps a voice said, You have another destiny. Be well. Of course, we don't hear about that in modern theology much. It seems to have only been taken place in biblical time. Now, let me ask you, why don't we see evidence like that? You could see the skin mark on the floor, you could know the man's weight, you can see his handprint on the conveyor belt. You can see the piece of meat. The um, uh, the beef parts, I guess you could say. You know, it is food. This does happen. It's on the conveyor belt, or however they processed um, beef. You can see that the blade cut clearly and cleanly and is quite sharp, but where his arm touched, while there was blood on the blade, it was not from him, but it is now clean because the blade impressed upon his arm without cutting it. There would be clear evidence of divine intervention, at least indirectly. But you never see these things. Now, for a naturalist like myself, you don't see them because there is no existence of the supernatural. This is the most compelling evidence that and meant many other examples I could give you like it that you never see anything of the supernatural and my point is because you don't that means that the existence of an all-powerful all-knowing benevolent God is very very unlikely. Go through the thoughts to yourself. Consider all the places you've seen your faith take a turn where you were definitely sure it was divine intervention. All the places where you think it might have been or at least it was divinely inspired 
act that gave someone the incentive to do something like a surgeon that had an insight or his hand was moved by God and places like the praying mechanic on your front fender of your car that just closed the lid on a knocking engine that was cooled that you definitely would not accept his reassurance. If you go through all three of those, you'll start to understand why we naturalists don't seek to disprove the existence of a supernatural being. We expect you to pick up the burden of proof. And that's why no atheist will really probably accept the challenge to disprove your God. And while I hopefully have given you, excuse me, given you some thought on to why it is very unlikely that anything of the supernatural even blowing on dice for gambling or taking that left instead of right that saved you from something and things that atheists and everyone in the world probably unconsciously or semi-consciously realizes they do the superstitions the gut feelings that can't really be substantiated by logic that's why we accept that it is futile to try to prove or disprove the existence of God Okay. I hope I answered your question well. And hopefully it can give you some insight into ways we see the world and we're so venomous upon it. Have a good day.